Dance Arts of Columbia provides fitness fun for everyone from three years old to adult. Dance Arts is a good environment where the friendly staff makes you feel comfortable. Dance Art feels that dance is an art form that you can experience firsthand by learning tap, jazz, modern, musical theater, lyrical, and ballet. Dance Arts urges you to enjoy a sense of accomplishment while getting fit and having fun. For class information, call 875-1569. Dance Arts of Columbia, serving Columbia since 1979. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends Friday, August the 3rd. I hope your day is going well before and I hope you have a wonderful weekend coming up. Connie Shea is with Welcome to Radio Friends, Connie. Thank you, Paul. Glad Connie to be here. is here to talk about the, uh, the Quilt Show Fayette Festival of the Arts, which is coming up. On right? August the 4th. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's a fun filled day to be in Fayette. Yeah. Starts at 9 o'clock. Yeah, and I think James and I are going to be there judging a cake contest. You are absolutely right. You're going to be judging the cake contest, and when you finish with that, you're going to come up to the quilt show. Right. Now, you're holding a beautiful quilt. This is yours. Yes, this, this is, is yours. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you need, what you need to do is watch this segment. Go to kbia.org, click on Talk Shows, and click on Radio Friends, and take a look at the, uh, the segment on video. This is... Abraham Lincoln. Yes, it's a tribute to Abe is what I call it. Okay. And it's, uh, the head is mounted on the Gettysburg Address. These blocks are log cabins for where he grew up, mm -hmm. and these blocks are the courthouse steps. Okay. So that you've got the entire Gitty, Gettysburg no, Address. No, the entire Gettysburg Address, and then these are just some of his quotes around like four score and seven years and a house mm -hmm. divided, those kind of things. Now, is this quilt it's going to be on display. It's on display. And this is your. It's this not for mine. sale. It <laughs> not is. for sale. It took me too long to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How many quilts will be on display? As of this morning, we had 150, and we have at least several more coming in. So we have uh, we have three, four different features this year. We have a display of quilts of valor, if you know about those, mm -hmm. where we recognize the veterans. We have a display. Um, there is a group of African American quilters from Moberly. They've researched the African American quilting history. They're going to bring bringing their quilts down. Oh. Then we have a, uh, another display uh, featuring a collection of red and white quilts. So we'll have quite a few just red and white quilts. Yeah. But then the center feature will be uh, the Civil War theme, and old Abe here will be in the center. Mm -hmm. We have some quilts that date back as far as 1875, and then we have others that are more modern. We've made them, in, but they're made out of what they call Civil War reproduction prints, and they are of the patterns that would have been used back in those days. Oh. And they are, the patterns relate, like there's Borderland and, uh, Borderland and Butternut and Blue, which is the Borderland battle between uh -huh. Kansas and Missouri. There's an Underground Railroad, which has the blocks of the Underground Railroad. Uh, just different things that relate to the Civil War. And it's going to be uh, where? It's at Lynn Memorial United Methodist Church, located on Central Methodist University's campus. Yeah, and it's, the church is air-conditioned. The, the church is air-conditioned. Air the church is air-conditioned. You can go downtown, and you can. there's all-day live entertainment on the bandstand at the Festival of the Arts. But when you get hot, you come just about two blocks up the street to Lynn Memorial, air-conditioned, beautiful big sanctuary yeah. that is gorgeous. And the thing is, when you walk into the church and you see all of these quilts are displayed, on the pews, on the all, pews, all mm -hmm. over. It it really is beautiful. It it's is beautiful. beautiful. Our church is beautiful at any time, but it's exceptionally beautiful with 150 or 60 quilts in it. Yes. Well, Connie, I wish you the very best. That will be tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will say there is an admission of five dollars, but every every penny of it goes to the food pantry. Mm -hmm. Our local food pantry. Yeah. So how much money did you raise last year? For last the food year bank? we were able to give them a thousand dollars. Okay. And which, hopefully this year you'll be able to give them two thousand dollars. That would be wonderful. Everybody come and see us. All right. All right. <laughs> Connie Shea, thank you so much for coming uh, Thank by. you, Paul. It's Thanks a quilt for show having me. It's a and the Fayette Festival of the Arts. It'll be at Courthouse Square, the, the, uh, the, the uh, Festival of the Arts, but then you go two blocks to mm. the church to and the you can Memorial. see the quilt show. Right. Okay. Hope to see everyone. All right, Connie. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now I turn to Nick Foster, Voluntary Action Center. Good to have you here, Thanks Nick. Thanks so much, Paul. Now you, you're coming off of uh, Christmas in July that you had last month, and That's that, right. went, uh, that went It went well. well. We had about 300 folks there, and they had a nice, great chicken picnic. And, uh, and you had Santa Claus? Santa Claus was there. He gave gifts to all the children who were there, and it was, it was a good time. So Santa Claus flew down from the North Pole. This must have been really stressful for old Santa. <laughs> well, you know, we as really, hot as it was. We felt really bad for Santa. We were so appreciative. We put two fans, on either, one on either side yeah, of I him. Yeah, sure I saw him cool. in the paper. I saw the picture in the paper. Santa looked like he was pretty warm. 
Well, I think he did okay with the fans. He, he managed, you know. Santa's tough. Yeah. So what, what have we got coming up now that you want to talk about? Well, I really want to tell you a story about uh, somebody who came to our uh, office just yesterday, a woman who uh, had a problem in her house. She had an electrical fire. Uh, just above her water heater, the, the electric uh, service to her water heater, it ruined her water heater. Uh, so she now has a problem of replacing that, fixing the electrical that's there. So she came to us to ask if we could help. And honestly, we are not going to be able to do all of that, but we'll be able to help her in part. And she, um, we, we pointed her to some other agencies and groups that might be able to help as well. So hopefully before too long, we'll be able to uh, get them back up and running, she and her two kids. Uh, and they've been trying to stay cool lately by taking cold baths. So she knew about uh, a couple of other programs that we've got going on, an air conditioner exchange program that we're doing in partnership with Columbia Water and Light. So she had brought a, an old window unit that she could exchange. We gave her a new one. Uh, she also knew about our fan program. So uh, she went away with a fan, with an air conditioner, so they can stay cool and maybe not have to rely on cold baths to stay cool during this hot spell. Yeah. Uh, but that's just a good example, I think, of the kind of things that we do. A lot of folks come to see what we can do to help, and very often we're able to help in several different ways. You know, I always thought, and still do, think of the Voluntary Action Center as a clearinghouse to help people. That's right. Uh, in all the years when we were doing Pepper and Friends, we would get letters or calls from someone who needed assistance. The first thing I would do would be pick up the phone and call Cindy Mustard mm -hmm. at the Voluntary Action mm -hmm. Center. Cindy always knew where to send the people in the right direction. And your organization, that's what you do. I think of it as a clearinghouse for people in but need. That's exactly right. We do so many different things that it puts us in touch with a lot of resources in the community. And I think especially our social service specialists uh, who've been doing this for a while uh, have access to that uh, information just immediately. I'm amazed by what they do, but, but by what we do as an organization, really. Uh, so I think, you're, I think you're right on in exactly that way. And the community provides resources for us to help meet needs right there as well. So we've had an incredible response from folks this summer with the Summer Fan Program. Uh, we've had some people also to contribute so that we can help a few people, just a few people, with uh, perhaps buying a window unit for their, for their mm -hmm. home as well. If people want to help out or they want more information, where do they go? What do they do? They can uh, reach us online at uh, vacmo.org, www.vacmo.org. They can write me, D-I-R, at vacmo.org. Or, or they can call our office, 874-2273. Okay, and if they need assistance... Uh, they can call the office. Same thing. Always call ahead before coming into the office to be sure that we can help you in the way that you need or that we can refer you to someone else who okay. can better help. All right. Nick Foster, thank you so, much, so much for coming Paul. to Voluntary Action Center. Tomorrow, Joan Stack, or Monday, Joan Stack from the uh, uh, State Historical Society is our guest. Our program directed by Travis McMillan, Reynolds Journalism Institute, audio is Pat Akers, KBIA. Our flow director, Danny Madison and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. And if you got any ideas or suggestions about something you'd like to, uh, to hear or see, drop me an email, pepperp at missouri.edu. Have a good weekend.